Hello everyone, welcome to our webinar, Early Voting Advocacy in 2022. My name is Carol Murnow and I am the Policy and Program Associate at Democracy North Carolina. Hi everyone, my name is Aja Bullock and I'm the Organizing Program Associate here at Democracy. Uh, my name is Marques Thompson. I am the lead regional managing organizer in these. And my name is Grace Prawn, and I am the MSW Advocacy Fellow. Thanks, everyone. We'll be leading the Elections Advocacy Program in 2022, which some of you knew previously as our County Board of Elections Monitoring Program. This training is designed for election advocates like you who are ready and willing to organize in your county to win robust early voting sites, days, and hours for the 22 primary election currently scheduled from April 28th through May 14th. However, the resources and information we provide can also be used for future advocacy efforts targeted at the 2022 general election in November. Democracy North Carolina is a nonpartisan organization, meaning people from all political affiliations or none who want to actively work to improve early voting options for the communities and counties can do so by following some of our recommendations. The more people who fight for early voting, the more likely we are to win good early voting plans and the more options we have to vote, the more all voters win. Many counties are already in the process of establishing their primary early voting plans, meaning that the time for doing this work is right now. We have learned from past election years that many early voting sites are established that are established in the primary are often carried over to the general election. And in 2022, we consider it to be a very important year um, because it's a midterm election. So we're very grateful for the support that you all are giving us and was important advocacy work. All right, so now for the reason that we're here. The reason we're doing this webinar is simple, to prepare you to win better early voting plans for your county. So what we're gonna do is we'll lay out our broader strategy to protect and expand the right to vote in 2022 and help build community influence, people power over how local elections are run in the years to come. Through this webinar, you will one, understand Dem and C statewide strategy for early voting advocacy, two, understand the process for deciding early voting plans, and three, mobilize around action steps for winning strong early voting plans. And we'll lay out why early voting is so important to North Carolina. As we continue to face an uncertain pandemic with rising COVID cases and a growing number of variants, it is important to, that we ensure early voting plans consider adequate space for social distancing. Thank you, Aja. To start us off, we'll go over why early voting matters. Early voting has been crucial to increasing voter turnout in North Carolina, and if we want more people to participate in elections, we have to use and expand early voting reforms like same-day registration. We want to be clear that early voting isn't just about convenience. There are many reasons why early voting is essential. And to start us off, early voting reduces long lines at the polls. The 2020 general election resulted in the highest voter turnout in recent American history, with over 5.5 million North Carolinians casting a ballot, making up 72% of the state's voting eligible population. We can go to the next slide. And in 2020, early voting was by far the most popular voting method in North Carolina. And we can hop on over to the next slide. Um, it only included one in six voters cast, um, casting a ballot on election day, which was down from one in three voters in 2016. This means that over 3.5 million North Carolinians cast their ballot in person during the early voting period. Second, we believe that early voting means more opportunity for all voters by providing flexible hours, days, and shorter distances. Many voters have a hard time or cannot get off of work um, on election day to vote. And we can go over to the next slide. Early voting provides flexible hours, including evening and weekends, so people have more chances to cast a ballot. Saturday and Sunday, from what we have seen, has the highest early voting turnout rates per hour of any day, with Sunday being the highest day of early voting overall. And voters can use any early voting site in their county instead of having to vote in a specified precinct, which reduces the use of provisional ballots. More early voting sites also allow voters shorter travel distances, increasing the likelihood that voters who are busy with work or with their families can cast their vote. Third, early voting offers one-stop problem solving for voting issues. Voters who may have moved recently can update their registration at an early voting site in their county. Anyone can register to vote or update their voter registration during early voting, which they can't do on election day. And voters who requested an absentee ballot 
can also return their ballot in person during the early voting period or on election day. We can go to the next slide. Finally, early voting helps bring in new voters. New voters can register and vote on the same day during early voting. This helps working class, poor, and younger voters who face more barriers to engaging in the voting process, leading to lower rates of provisional ballot usage. So how do we do it? How do we win strong early voting plans? Well, to win, we have to, number one, have a goal, make our own plan. Uh, number two, understand how decisions are made. Number three, show up and take action together. For the 2020 primary, for example, Democracy North Carolina prioritized uh, pushing for strong early voting plans in over a half, that's 54 North Carolina counties that not only accounted for the vast majority of voters in the state, but also had important weekend hours, campus polls, and sites that served underrepresented groups on the line. So all these wins we achieved are worth defending again this year. For the 2022 primary election, we are monitoring early voting plans in 25 counties, and we are prepared to support you in advocating for better plans within your county. You can find the sample of past letters Democracy NC has sent to counties with research and suggestions at demnc.co slash EV letters. Now, while we've narrowed our focus to where we have capacity to support this campaign, please know that all 100 boards of elections create early voting plans and deserve strong advocates like you. Regardless of where you live in the state, we highly encourage you to organize in your county. All right, so over the course of this presentation, you've heard us say a few times now that Democracy North Carolina is pushing for good or better or robust early voting plans. But what do we mean by good vote early voting plans? So that includes convenient voting locations for young and student voters in the surrounding community. Youth access is extremely important. It includes robust weekend voting hours over the 17 day period, which includes multiple Saturday and Sunday voting options. Satellite voting locations that can serve historically underrepresented voters, including black voters and other communities of color, and where possible, larger voting centers that will allow voters and poll workers to safely distance. At the same time, we're pushing for more access. We also want to remember that turnout in 2022 will not be as high as a presidential election, but given that it is a midterm year, it will be higher than the 2021 election. We need to be aware of this difference in election cycles when advocating for early voting hours and sites and when reviewing plans this year. Yeah, now we said before that now is the time for this campaign. We want to stress this urgency because right now, early voting uh, for the 2022 primary has already begun the, uh, the plans for this. And with plans due to the State Board of Elections of February 18th, we expect that some counties will get in preparing their early voting plans for the general election as early as June. And we'll be asking you to help us monitor that process later in the year. So here's an example of how it works in a county where all the typical ads come to play. In 2018, working with members of our coalition, we set goals around four distinct asks and plans of the Cumberland County uh, Board to uh, restrain, re, I'm sorry, retain early voting and on Sunday, uh, find a new location to move from Cliffdale, that was a site that historically served black voters, three, to keep Smith Rec open, that would be keeping a viable option for Fayetteville State students, and four, get consistent hours at the Spring Lake location for working voters. So this meant, and uh, th this meant tactics that included showing up and taking action together. So what we did was we had to get a sense about when the board will work on its plans and to make sure the public was invited and given enough notice to be there. It meant prepping talking points that allow community members to speak collectively for these ads. It meant highlighting pastors and other influence makers that could speak on behalf of their congregation for Sunday voting. And it also meant providing speakers with data to support requests being made, such as after duty military persons uh, to advocate for weekend hours or include Sunday hours because of their work schedule. Uh, we had to make sure that student body presidents from SSU were uh, there to represent student voices. So all of these were uh, the tactics that we did. And so it also meant having creative tactics, is what we call, uh, to, 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 to make this process work. So that also meant creating a short film to advocate for Smith Rec Center. And we circulated that film on social media ahead of the meeting 
until the plans were done. Uh, it also meant filling the Board of Election meetings. That room we wanted to be full every time for every meeting. It also meant identifying board members that would be willing to break any unanimous vote and petition the state board for an alternative plan, uh, including goals and sites and hours. Thank you, Marquez, for that uh, recap of the work we did in 2018. Um, so here's what happened in Cumberland County. So, so thanks to the lack of early voting flexibility, the county ended up cutting three early voting sites in 2018 compared to 2014. This included East Regional Library, E. Miller, and Smith Recreation Center, which, as Marquez mentioned, was the site closest to FSU and HBCU. Next slide, please. Also in Cumberland County, we saw that the Board of Election eliminated those two sites that I mentioned before, and these had the highest proportion of Black voters. So 95% of the voters who cast a ballot at Smith Rec in 2014 were Black, and 73% of the voters who cast ballots at E. Miller in 2014 were also Black. Now, advocates in this county have been alerted to this impact. They know what their goals are, who their targets must be, and how to effectively show up speak up and take action together. For the 2020 primary, that meant saving a site for students at Fayetteville State University. Why does it matter if a few low turnout sites were closed? In a lower turnout election in 2014, 6,905 voters used these sites. But remember, in 2008, only 14,177 votes was the difference between one president winning North Carolina's electoral votes or losing them. In short, it only takes a few thousand votes to swing even a presidential election, even less to decide the state's governor. So no pressure, but every site that is historically used, especially those serving an incredibly large number of underrepresented voters, 95% at Smith Rec being Black, can be worth defending. That's why we're fighting for better plans. Thank you, Aja. Next, we want to go over how these decisions are made. In any campaign, we have to map out who our targets are and how to influence them. And in organizing, the word target is used to describe the people with the power to give you what you want, the decision makers. Early voting plans are often crafted by or with major input of the paid county election staff as the board of such as the Board of Elections Director, but they may must go get final approval and a vote by the appointed members of the county board. The vote at the county level must be unanimous to approve the plan, and if that unanimous vote doesn't happen, any single county board member can submit an alternative plan to the State Board of Elections, which has final authority. This is really important when it comes to lobbying and targeting the kinds of early voting plans that you want to see. So the county board elections members are our main targets, but the state board of elections members, as well as the county staff, are what we'd call secondary targets or people who have some influence over the main targets. Because the county board members are our primary targets, I want to spend some more time talking about the board structure. In 2022, every county board has five members, two Republicans and three Democrats, the majority being from the party of the governor. Under this structure, all 100 local boards will have a Democratic chair, at least in 2022. The chair has authority to call meetings, set the agenda, and lead meetings. In other words, they control the key parts of the decision-making process. And I'm telling you this not to focus on the partisan nature of the boards, but to emphasize that these are people just like me and you. When we're organizing to influence or pressure targets, we need to view each member as a potential early voting champion. So for this campaign, we're targeting the Board of Elections members, not the board as an entity. We need to know what board members care about and which board members we can count on, which board members support our ideas for what makes a good early voting plan and which ones don't which board members um, we need to get a unanimous vote, and we need to know if any of the five members would be willing to block a bad plan, a plan with things like a reduction of weekend hours or important sites to prevent a unanimous vote. And then they need to submit a better plan to the state board, also known as a non-unanimous or alternative plan if needed. And this is an important leverage point for our organizing. One last thing about the structure, the current state structure has five Board of Elections members as well, with the majority also being from the party of the governor. Votes on early voting plans at the state board level are made by the majority of members present. So to recap, the county's paid staff helps craft the plan, but the primary targets is a unanimous early voting plan passed by the five-member county board. 
But if the five member board is going to pass a bad plan, a single county board of elections member can file an alternative plan which is known as non-unanimous, to be considered by the State Board of Elections, which has the final say. In adopting plans, the State Board of Elections considers whether or not the county has provided adequate coverage of the county's electorate and if the plan disproportionately favors any party, racial, or ethnic group or candidate. Thanks, y'all, for that overview of the um, both county board and state board structure. So now it's time for the final step time to show up and take action together. The simple action plan on a tight timeline at least starts with first, finding out when your county board of election will be meeting and what's on the agenda. You can do that by calling ahead to confirm meeting times and seeing if there's any virtual options. Lucky, lucky, luckily for you, we've done a lot of this already and you can access it via our Airtable calendar that will be shared with you. After doing that, you'll also wanna find out when the meeting is and if there's a preliminary early voting plan being discussed and if possible request access to see it beforehand finally you want to find out if the county will provide public comment opportunities either via a virtual or in-person meeting now all of that after all of that you want to continue to gather intelligence so that includes contacting one of the county board of elections members or the executive director or any other staff member that you may have a relationship with remember early voting advocacy is year-round work Ideally, we get to know our board members by attending meetings when early voting is being discussed and when it's not. So I wanna ask them, again, what preliminary plans exist for early voting sites? What's the schedule and process for making a decision? Will they consider or support opening early voting sites on a Sunday? And what would persuade them to open sites for Saturday hours and or Sunday? Thank you for that, Aja. So after those steps, after gathering this intelligence, you want to organize. You want to share the intelligence with supporters, friendly civic groups, and your other allies. Uh, what do they think about the, the early voting plans? Look at previous plans in midterm years. In this case, that would be 2014 and 2018. And uh, think about what you'd like for a good plan. Things like what locations will provide good access for underrepresented voters, Think about like student voters, voters of color, rural voters, uh, voters with disabilities. You also want to think about weekend hours. You want, after this, you want to conduct a campaign to win your goal, like you would any other issue. Consider tactics like holding a meeting with each board member with a diverse group of your supporters. Or you could try attending board of election meetings with others, even discussion, uh, even if the discussion of, of early voting plans isn't on the agenda. That's in order to make those relationships that I just mentioned. You want to organize a diverse group to go with you. For example, you could take uh, uh, campus leaders uh, to push for Sunday voting, or you could take a faith leader to do something like that. Uh, for uh, You could get someone to fight for a site in your campus. You want to pack that house and show how important this is. Speak out about the importance of adding or defending weekend voting hours, especially if the county had had them previously. Uh, coming back to a point that I have made briefly about early voting and election cycles, it's important not to advocate for too many additional hours or sites unless you're confident that they will be used, since poor use can set a bad precedent, especially in a year with tight election budgets. So that will make it harder to advocate for additional sites and hours in the future. So we want to rely on the expertise of your community members and the research that we provide uh, to figure out what are the best sites and hours to be fighting for. Keep following the process. County Board of Elections are required to announce their meetings ahead of time and agenda, including any discussion of or vote regarding the early voting plan. The discussion and vote should be held in a public meeting, so keep showing up. Ask the staff to include you on the email or media list for all notices of meetings. By the time of the vote, you should have a good sense of uh, what will happen based on your intelligence gathered. Stick with it until the end, as if your county plan goes to the State Board of Elections with a unanimous plan, unanimous plan, plan to follow that process too. Grace, and the very last thing you want to do is report back to us. 
we have a Google reporting form that we ask you to fill out after interactions with Board of Elections staff or board members or attendance at Board of Elections meetings. The more we know what's happening, the better strategic advice and support we can offer you. We want to communicate, we want communications to be a two-way street. We'll send you information and we need you to send us information too. You can find our reporting form at demnc.co slash BOE report form. Thanks, Carol. This last year, we identified many issues on the local level. First, lack of access to virtual meeting options or public comment, little notice of upcoming meetings and poor website maintenance, precinct consolidations that disproportionately impact Black and Brown voters, and lastly, election poll worker and precinct judge shortages due to COVID-19 and budget cuts. No one knows what the future will hold, but we can all agree that all public Board of Elections meetings should be open and accessible to the public and public comment. If your County Board of Elections tells you that they are not offering a virtual meeting option, please tell them that they should and encourage other advocates to do the same and let us know if they don't or won't. Our report form includes an area for pre-meeting -intelli pre intelligence, so let our experts know if and when your county denies meeting notices or email us directly at elections at democracync.org. That said, we're here to help. Democracy NC and our partners are also happy to connect you to our regional managing organizers and additional advocates working in your region. We can also answer any questions you may have pertaining to the early voting process and provide you with background data and research on counties in our priority regions. Currently, we have in-depth profiles on 25 of our priority counties that we can provide to you, as well as a quick data analysis on how a site might impact certain communities within our target regions. It may seem like a lot, but I want you to understand that we can do this, y'all. We have had great success with this kind of concerted early voting advocacy in the past. Against insurmountable odds, we successfully defended Sunday voting options in 2016, and we garnered a record number of Sunday options in the 2020 primary. We also helped defend campus sites and increased weekend hours, despite pressures created by burdensome uniform weekday hours uh, last year. So. When you're feeling dejected, just remember the lesson of 2016 in Guilford County, when 300 people working together, packed their board of elections, pushed back against partisan attempts to limit early voting options, and it worked. It set in motion a movement that in the presidential election that year touched over 70 counties. Guilford made sure that nothing bad was passed in the darkness, and more importantly, that nothing bad passed at all. Good early voting plans can be one packed meeting room away. Thanks for sharing that story, Marquez. So we can do this and here's the next steps to get there. As a reminder, our resource can, resources can be found at dimnc.co slash elections advocacy, which will be included in all of the other resources we mentioned. You'll also want to begin or continue connecting with others in your counties to help you make a plan and review prior, prior plans. Let us know if you need help connecting with others in your county. As we mentioned, we may know some folks who are already taking action. Make, you also want to continue attending meetings. Many of those meetings will be listed on our Airtable tracker. But to find out, to find your county, also visit our local election advocacy hub, demnc.co slash election advocacy. Democracy North Carolina has 25 counties that will be monitoring and supporting early voting campaigns. If your county is among them, we will do our best to keep you updated and connected via email communication. Regardless, we hope you'll self-organize using the resources we've provided and we'll provide to you after this webinar. I really wanna emphasize that you can do this. We provide tools, research, and support, but this is our democracy and these are your communities. So as I mentioned again, find out when your BOE meetings are, start attending them. Stay tuned for even more tips and tools by getting our emails. And last but certainly not least, you have our hub link dimensy.co slash elections advocacy where you can have all the training materials that will be available. For all else, feel free to contact us. Um, Carol's phone number and my phone number up there along with the email that you can reach any of us at. So thank you for viewing our training. Thanks to all of my co-facilitators. Um, yeah, let's, let's, let's get these good early voting plans. <laughs> Yeah. Thanks, everyone.